Hi everyone, welcome to this video. I hope you all are doing good. Today we are going to discuss another feature which is released with Yokohama release called as CI CD APIs for update sets, which helps you actually to deploy update sets from one instance to another instance. It has multiple layers which we will see into these videos. I, I, I have also prepared multiple use cases for you to understand how these APIs work. And also this video will help you to streamline a process within your organization according to your needs. But our main focus is of course going to be the update set APIs under CICT. So stay tuned and watch the video until end. I promise you will leave this video with some new learnings. Without wasting time, let's get started with update set APIs. Let's understand the setup. What do we really need basically to integrate two instances? My use case is simple. I'm going to show you how to pull an update set from a source instance into a destination instance. As you can see on the screen, this instance is called as a destination instance starting with 272. And then I have another instance, which is called a source instance starting with 289, right? To pull the update set from one instance to another instance, we need one user account, which has rights, basically admin rights. Uh, I'm using admin rights to pull the update set from source instance into destination instance. I'm going to use this particular account with my name Ashutosh Munod and here you can see I have given this user admin access. On the destination instance, on the other hand, you need to set up an update source first so that that update source is pointing to your source instance, which has, again, you can see the username is the same. It will pull the update sets from source instance into destination instance. I might also use terms like orchestrating instance and non-orchestrating instance, where orchestrating instance is uh, the instance which is pulling the update set, right? Now let's proceed. Before we see end-to-end -end demo, I want to walk you through the APIs itself. So what ServiceNow has provided out of the box on update set APIs. I have created a simple flow which gets triggered from a catalog item, but I will show you it in a bit. Before that, this is a subflow retrieve update set with update set source ID out of the box subflow, which I am using to retrieve an update set from source instance into destination instance. If you look carefully now, it needs certain parameters, which we need to tell to this particular API that what kind of update source you need to trigger if you have multiple update sources uh, configured in your instance and which update set do you want to retrieve because out of the box if you see if you go and click retrieve completed update sets it will retrieve all the updates sets. but in this case no it will only retrieve an update set which we are specifying here so if you look at the inputs for this subflow closely you will see that we are providing an instance url we are providing credentials which I already showed you in the setup uh, chapter. And we are providing update set source ID along with the update set ID, sys ID, which we need to re uh, retrieve. The two things which we really need to be careful here about is the instance URL and the update set source ID. Because you might think, uh, which I think I had a confusion on was, hey, instance URL, do I need to provide a URL for from which the update set should be pulled or should it be the instance URL where the update source is configured. Uh, so in this case, I'm providing the URL of the destination instance because I'm pulling the update set from the source instance. I have configured the update source on this particular instance. Hence, I'm providing the URL for this instance along with the sys ID of the update source in the update set source ID. And then I'm providing uh, the sys ID of an update set, which I want to retrieve from the source instance. Okay. 
Now, this API, if you look very closely, if I open this particular subflow, there is one more API which has been used just to get the status of the retrieval because if the retrieval takes more time, we have to wait until the retrieval is completed. And that is basically happening in get retrieve update set action. In this particular action, if I open, it is basically getting the, the status of the progress worker, which was triggered as part of the previous action, which was retrieve update set. And if I come closely go here, you can see progress is the resource path where we provide the progress ID, which is actually coming from the action, which is, let me quickly walk through this, which is coming from this particular action. Similarly, once the progress uh, is complete, completed, we get a sys ID of the retrieve update set, which we are passing to another subflow, again out of the box subflow, which is commit retrieve update set. So we take that sys ID, give it to this subflow, and it will basically commit the update set. To prove that, what I also did is basically, I created an update set in my source instance, which I'm going to quickly show you. called as uh, demo2 and I have also created postman calls just to show you how all these things work. So basically you will see first I will retrieve the update set then check the progress and then commit the update set. The advantage of this is you can have this whole pipeline set up into your different environment not even service now but somewhere CI CD in Azure DevOps Git and you can still trigger this and follow the whole process. What I will quickly do is, uh, as I showed you, this demo to update set is not part of destination. Uh, as far as I know, let's quickly look. No, it's not retrieved. So what I want to prove now is basically, I want to retrieve that particular update set. You will see now it's pending. It has given me an API to check the progress along with the progress ID. Before I do that, I will quickly go into the destination instance and I will show you that it has been previewed. Copy this, uh, I have created some variables, so I'm going to update it here. Go back to this particular API because I want to get the details of the progress worker. And here you will now see that it will say one update set retrieved and previewed. Now how it is previewed is basically based upon there is one, uh, I will show it to you when we once we go jump into uh, the ServiceNow instance, but it gives me the remote update set sys ID. I'm again going to copy that, go here, put it here, and then I'm going to commit this update set. Now, this is an interesting part where it says that, hey, you know what, you can't commit the update set because there are some problems. And this is exactly what I wanted to show. Like the error handling is very well handled in this whole uh, API setup. So you can see I was not allowed to do this. So basically I need to take some action on this and then I have to commit the update set, right? Now let's, try to replicate it into service now. What I am going to do is I'm going to quickly go to my source instance. Uh, I'm going to create one, uh, let's call it as demo three update set. Um, maybe I will create one catalog item. Let's say demo three as well. Submit. Let's go back to the update set just to see if, so you can see now the catalog item is part of this, right? Now the question can be, what if I do not mark this as complete? Let's try to see what happens in service now itself. So I'm going to copy the sys ID of this particular update set. 
I'm going to go to the destination instance. I have created a catalog item which actually triggers the flow which I just showed you. I'm going to put the sys ID here and click order now. And what this will do is this will trigger this particular flow. I'm going to go to the executions. You see now it's saying waiting. It's in progress and now it's completed. But here, if you see the output says no updates are available on this remote instance with ID what I provided because it's not marked as complete. Now let's proceed and mark this update set as complete and save this update set. I'm going to quickly again copy the sys ID, go back to my destination instance. I'm going to put the sys ID again and say order now. Just quickly going to here, you can see now it's been previewed operations uh, quickly reload you can see it was retrieved successfully it says one update set retrieved and previewed same like what i showed you in postman and if i again reload this it will say hey you know what i the update set was successfully commit to verify that let's see what happens here so you can see it was committed successfully Right. And if I open that update set, you will also see the customer updates uh, inside it, which was nothing but our catalog item. So the reason why I'm saying this is it's very, uh, let's say for, for me, basically in my persona as developer, architect or a platform owner, this API is going to help me to set up the whole pipeline and add extra layers to it. Like if I want to run ATF, if I want to run instant scan all the things I can do before I commit the update set, right? Final thing, which I want to show you as part of this update, uh, this particular use case, which is the pool use case is, basically these two check boxes, auto preview and cleanup. I think I mentioned it, but again, auto preview is basically, it will retrieve and preview the update set cleanup retrieve is it will flush if by any chance someone has retrieved that update set already and if it is in preview state it will clear that update set and it will re-retrieve it from the source instance okay in part two what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you how you can push update sets from dev instance to your production or from dev to test instance so other way around from your source instance to your destination instance Okay, so stay tuned. And if you have any feedback, please provide it into the comments. And if you have any new use case, which you want to see as part of these APIs, please let me know and I will be able to, I will try to replicate it and I will be uh, recording a video for it. For now, thank you so much. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up leave a comment below and subscribe to the channel for more awesome content. Hit that notification bell so you never miss an update. I appreciate all your support and I'll see you in the next video.